ما يمس المواطن تطوير المرافق الخدمات الأساسية للمواطنين والمقيمين وتطوير البيئة التعليمية ودعم خطط الإسكان ووجه سموه بتوجيه واضح أن تستمر الحكومة في متابعة مسجدات الأوضاع الصحية والاقتصادية محليا ودوليا وتوفير المخصصات للقطاع الصحي ليتمكن من مواجهة الجائحة ولنتفادى اتخاذ أي إجراءات احترازية إضافية أيضا تابعنا كلمة سمو ولي العهد الوافية والشاملة بتعليق سموه على الإعلان الميزانية تضمنت كلمة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير محمد بن سلمان نقاط واضحة جدا فيما يتعلق باقتصاد المملكة ومالية المملكة والاستدامة المالية من أهم ما تطرق لسموه هذا اليوم في كلمة بعد إعلان الميزانية هو الاستمرار في تحقيق المنجزات والمستهدفات وفق توجيهات خادم الحرمين الشريفين التزام الحكومة بحجم الإنفاق المخطط له على المدى المتوسط وفق ما سبق إعلان وهذه مهمة جدا التركيز في لدى الحكومة هو الاستدامة المالية أن نكون واضحين جدا في سقوف الإنفاق ونلتزم بها أيا كانت الإيرادات وأيا كان وضع السوق لنمكن القطاع الخاص لنمكن المواطنين من معرفة التوجه المستقبلي على المدى المتوسط أيضا كان التركيز من سمو على استكمال العمل في تطوير عملية التخطيط المالي ورفع كفاءة الإنفاق والحفاظ على الاستدامة المالية ركز سموه أيضا على أهمية استخدام الموارد المتاحة بما يحقق أفضل عائد منها وتحدث سموه عن السياسة المالية التي اتبعتها الحكومة واستطاعت من خلالها السيطرة على العجز في الميزانية مع المحافظة على تحقيق مستهدفات رؤية المملكة 2030 وذكر سموه أن الفوائد سيتم عند تحققها سيتم استخدامها لتعزيز الاحتياطيات لنتمكن بإذن الله تعالى من مواجهة ما تبقى من الجائحة وتقوية المركز المالي للحكومة ورفع قدرتنا على التصدي لأي أزمات عالمية في المستقبل لا قدر الله تحدث سموه أيضا عن الإنجازات المتتالية التي تحققت وفق الاستراتيجيات والبرامج التي أطلقتها الحكومة والمعلن عنها مسبقا تحدث سموه أيضا عن دور المواطن المحوري في تحقيق التنمية الاقتصادية زيادة تمكين المرأة التي تمثل مشاركتها قوة إيجابية للمجتمع تحدث سموه أيضا عن التأكيد على أهمية دور القطاع الخاص كشريك محوري ورئيسي وحيوي في التنمية وأن الاستراتيجية الوطنية للاستثمار تستهدف تمكين القطاع الخاص للمشاركة في الفرص الواعدة المدعومة من الحكومة حيث سيبلغ الإنفاق وفق الاستراتيجية 12 تريليون ريال حتى العام 2030 شاملة ما تم الإعلان عنه من سموه 5 تريليون تحت برنامج شريك 3 تريليون ريال تحت برنامج صندوق الاستثمارات العامة 4 تريليون من الاستثمارات من القطاع الخاص المحلي والدولي إضافة بالتأكيد إلى الإنفاق الحكومي للعشر سنوات القادمة بحدود 10 تريليون والاستهلاك الخاص بما يزيد عن 5 تريليون بحيث يكون الإجمالي تقريبا ما سينفق في المملكة خلال العشر سنوات القادمة 27 تريليون ريال أيضا تحدث سمو عن تحقيق ما يتطلع إليه أهمية وركز عليها سمو وتحقيق ما يتطلع إليه المواطن من تحسين ورفع جودة الخدمات وتحسين فرص الاستثمار وزيادة فرص التوظيف تحدث سمو في البيان عن ما تم إنجازه من جهود مشتركة بين الحكومة والقطاع الخاص لخفض مستوى البطالة إلى 11.3 ولا زلنا نستهدف بإذن الله تعالى في عام 2030 تحقيق المستهدف المعلن عن 7% بإذن الله وأقل كما تحدث سموه بالتأكيد عن دور المملكة الريادي في استقرار الطاقة وأسواقها وقيادة الحقبة الخضراء القادمة في ما يتعلق بالميزانية وكما سمعنا في إعلان الميزانية قبل قليل قبل التحدث عن الأرقام أعتقد أن المهم جدا التحدث عن الركائز الأساسية خلف الميزانية الركائز ثلاثة تقريبا وهي ضمان استدامة المالية العامة من خلال تنويع مصادر الإيرادات ورفع كفاءة الإنفاق وهذه ستكون سياسة على المدى المتوسط والطويل نتأكد فيها من 
استقرار المالية العامة قدرتها على مواجهة الأزمات عدم المسايرة التذبذبات في الإيرادات التأكد من أن ضبط الإنفاق الحكومي والصرف في مجالات تحقق أكبر عائد منها الركيزة الثانية هي تمكين القطاع الخاص وتحدث سموه كما ذكرت قبل قليل عن الدور الفاعل والمحوري للقطاع الخاص سيستمر جهود الحكومة وتستمر جهود الحكومة بإذن الله تعالى في تمكين القطاع الخاص سواء من خلال الاستراتيجية الوطنية للاستثمار التي يعلن عنها والتي سيقودها بإذن الله القطاع الخاص بتمكين ودعم وتحفيز من الحكومة ولكن أيضا هناك عدة أجنحة ستدعم القطاع الخاص منها صندوق التنمية الوطني وما يقوم فيه من جهود لتوحيد وتركيز استراتيجيات الصناديق والبنوك التابعة له لتحقيق أعلى عائد وتوفير التمويل للقطاع الخاص وأيضا جهود صندوق الاستثمارات العامة في تمكين القطاع الخاص وجلب مزيد من الاستثمارات مع الصندوق من القطاع الخاص الركيزة الثالثة هي التحولات الهيكلية المستمرة من خلال برامج تحقيق رؤية المملكة 2030 بما في ذلك برنامج التحول الوطني برنامج خدمة ضيوف الرحمن برنامج تطوير القطاع المالي برنامج التخصيص وغيرها من البرامج المهمة اللي من المتأمل والآن بدأنا نشهد آثارها من تحدث نقلة هيكلية في الاقتصاد ما يعود على الوطن والمواطن بالخير بإذن الله تعالى فيما يتعلق بأبرز المؤشرات المالية في الميزانية العامة للدولة للعام المالي القادم 2022 كما سمعنا قبل قليل الإيرادات من المتوقع أن تكون في حدود تريليون 45 مليار النفقات كما أعلن عنها سابقا وكما ذكر سمو ولي العهد صاحب سمو الملك الأمير محمد بن سلمان clearly said that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the government is, is highly committed uh, to ha what has been, of course, announced, uh, particularly when it comes to the medium term. It will be 90, uh, 955 uh, billion, of course, and will be expected up to 90, uh, 90 billion Saudi Riyals. Out of this, of course, out of the 955, 955 for the uh, broad, uh, broad pillars, and as for the administrative, of course, uh, the Ministry of Interior, as for the military sector, including Ministry of Defense, uh, Intelligence, uh, the uh, National Guards, along with other military, 171 uh, billion, uh, billion, of course, uh, as for the economic sectors, uh, 54 billions, uh, the healthcare sector and national development, uh, social development. Uh, uh, 140 economy education 140 billions as for the basic uh, transportation logistic uh, 42 billions of course we see a much focus of course uh, relating to the importance and interest of uh, uh, citizens particularly education and health care and also the municip municipal of course uh, which focuses or which takes up at about 42 uh, percent of the budget as for the financial indicators on the medium Term, uh, there are two points that I need to refer to as a restructuring or remapping our own expectations of the revenues and also uh, uh, updating the ceiling. Of course, the financial sustainability program is working to develop a plan, a crystal clear plan, in order to identify the ceiling of expenditure away from the, of course, the expectation of revenues uh, based on, uh, on which, of course, as we see in front of us, the structural revenues that will be, of course, uh, will be used to identify the ceilings uh, uh, 94 and 94 to, uh, 90, 942 and 962 uh, billions uh, for the 2023 and 2024 to be mer very much transparent of course uh, it will be 942 uh, billions up to 952 uh, uh, of course as for the surplus uh, we will uh, 2023, 2024, I announce again and again and emphasize again and again that these expectations are relating to the revenues and are not based on our readings of the future, but also uh, based on the structure of revenues that we are uh, based, of course, on, and we will announce at the end of the 
at, at the end of the 2022, of course, our own expectations for the actual finance, uh, hopefully. As for the uh, scenarios of revenues, uh, we have not yet been out of the COVID-19 pandemic, so consequently, the financial committee led by the, his, Royal Highness, uh, Crown, uh, his Royal Highness Crown Prince, uh, a lot of groups, a lot of scenarios, a lot of things uh, that are different to be more prepared, well prepared uh, to overcome any crises, uh, global crises, uh, God forbidden, of course. Uh, most of the think tanks expect uh, that the, economy, the global economy will be recovered, even though they, we have different challenges, of course. Uh, most of the think tanks expect that there will be a kind of uh, a recession of uh, the demand and consumption uh, for the goods and other services or products at the same time. However, there will be, oh, there are so many challenges that uh, are facing the world, not just the Kingdom of Arabia, whether uh, as for the Kingdom, uh, as for the COVID-19 and the new mutations, uh, as we see here, there, and uh, there are like partial or, uh, or total uh, lockdown across the world. The second point is the, the challenges of the uh, supply chain in terms of the inflation, uh, so that will play, play such an uh, economic impact, uh, a financial impact, uh, and also in this case, of course, the cost will be higher on the economy in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So uh, we have four scenarios for the revenues in 2022. The structural revenues that we use to uh, build the ceiling, which has been announced previously in the preliminary uh, declaration, and the basic revenues uh, scenario one one scenario that is based on something that is reasonable for 2022, which has been announced, of course, uh, in 2042, uh, and there are less expectations and reserve taking into consideration the uh, threats and the possibility of threats that I have talked about. Uh, and we expect, of course, uh, revenues about uh, 991 and other interactive or active in terms of like the uh, economy uh, increase and the more control, of course, on the COVID-19 that may up to 1 trillion, 143 billion. As for the expectations of the, for the motivations of economy in the medium term, including next year, of course, and 2023 and 2024, there is a group of factors that are uh, motivating. I'll start with the economy uh, factors. Uh, we expect that this year, of course, we expect to be uh, expected to be higher uh, in terms of while the uh, total uh, the non-oil. Uh, no, then an oil, of course, as for us, of course, what is important in the government is to follow up the non-oil uh, uh, total uh, budget, uh, total production uh, is very important. Our own successful plans and strategies as for uh, we expect uh, the, the local production uh, expected to be three trillions uh, or plus in 2023 and we expect it to be for the uh, local non-oil pro local productions uh, five percent for the upcoming three years we hope also that we hope this will be more and more along uh, with other initiatives to be realized as for the movements of a growth and development exactly we expect to see a development in implementing the Vision 2030 programs and initiatives, we expect uh, the we uh, we expect the immunization or immunity to be higher and higher than what we have received. Why? Because the uh, close cooperation with the citizens uh, to take the third boost, uh, uh, of course, vaccine is to avoid, uh, of course, uh, to avoid uh, the COVID-19 pandemic to get out of track. Uh, because so we don't want to take. Uh, any uh, extra procedures and measures we do expect, uh, we do trust and, and we have high confidence in the citizens and also we have great efforts of course by the government, government. and we, I, I hope everyone of course to take the uh, uh, precautionary procedures also uh, as announced by the Ministry of Health and I'm speaking here about this year, it is promising, it is bright, at the end of course, at the end of the fourth quarter it was uh, the growth of the local production was about 5.5 uh, the non-oil of course one supported by 
the uh, growth and development of the private sector, which is 7%, seven, 7%, which is a high percentage, which also enhances the trust and confidence of the private sector when it comes to the economic reforms uh, headed by the custodian of the Hamas government. Of course, as for the consumption indicators recorded as announced, of course, up until the end of October, uh, an increase of more than 35% in terms of the sale and both in the electronic commerce, uh, which means that uh, the consumption level is getting higher and increasingly growing. And also the level of employment and job creations is higher and higher. As for the consumption index and also the trust of investors in economy, PMI, is in, uh, increased uh, uh, up to 57, which is 13 uh, percent in comparison with last year, and also the increase of the government to support the uh, medium and uh, small and medium-sized enterprises uh, through the establishment of of, of the bank, uh, which has come, of course, under the uh, recommendations of the Crown Prince uh, approved by the uh, Constitutional Mosque. Uh, the bank will get started, of course, to support the medium, small and medium-sized enterprises when it comes also to the job creation uh, uh, and, and job employment will start like in 2022. Also, we have different programs uh, that support the small and medium-sized enterprises such as Kafala and other funds that support inter entrepreneurs. Equally important as for enabling the private sector, we've seen the high increase of investments in the private sector, 70%, seven, sorry, 7% 7 supported by the programs and strategies launched by the government. In addition, of course, uh, Adlib uh, and also the support of the national industry and uh, logistic, also by the, uh, launched by the Crown Prince, uh, the program of the support of the transportation or transport and the logistics, uh, which provide a great support for the private sector. And we will see more and more growth and development in the medium term uh, based on this and as a result of this. And also talked about the uh, national strategy of investment. I, would like, I don't want to repeat it, but it is very important given the unified vision of the investment over the upcoming 10 years. And also, Sharika program also targets to make the private sector to take it from the investments that are traditional to be more viable, more vivid uh, over more than like 10 year time, more than 10 year time, uh, supported by motivations by Sharik program. We expect, of course, uh, the investments to be through uh, Sharik program to be five trillion that, of course, uh, provide different opportunities for the private sector in addition to three trillion for, uh, by uh, the uh, PIF and also four uh, trillion by the private sector. Also, the uh, government expenditure, 10 uh, trillion, and the special, of course, uh, expenditure is uh, 10 uh, trillion. Also, the conference announced uh, this year, of course, announced uh, the development of what is known as legislation that has been updated for the private sector why to make more justice to make to make more uh, transparency in terms of the legislation also to make uh, uh, the private sector more peace of mind and, and insurance we are working hard to enhance the tourism environment across the kingdom of Serbia we have launched of course the strategy of tourism and we expect to uh, to have more tourism uh, so that tourism come into play across the kingdom of Serbia to have more economic growth and development and also enhance more job opportunities for the male and female opportunities uh, sorry male and female citizens we have a lot of uh, efforts are being made we have seen uh, different seasons across the kingdom of Serbia some of which have been launched and some of which also will be launched later in 2022 of course which supports the quality of life or life quality the job opportunities economy uh, the local economy and also increase the oil production based on the OBIC increment, which of course support the uh, growth of the economy. We do expect uh, that the economy to grow up to 2022, of course, up to 7.4% 7 7 supported by the increase of oil production, also supported by the local production that is non oil, oil that is non oil, which of course will grow and develop 5%, uh, hopefully. Before I open the floor to, to, to the questions, if you allow me, uh, there are certain points I'd like to focus more on. First, in such a great event or meeting, it's once a year, 
uh, for the budget of, of the Kingdom of Israel, I'd like to express my appreciation the soldiers, the security men who stay day and night, who sacrifice their lives. Why? To enjoy our life, to enjoy our life normally without any kind of headache, without any kind of pain. So great appreciation, gratitude go to all of them. Equally important, I will be also more passionate to feel the power of our own soldiers inside and at the borders of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to protect the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The His Royal Highness Sir Crown Prince also emphasized and also I'd like to emphasize and reiterate his keynote speech, citizen, citizens are the key, the key factors of the development and the growth. Citizens are the most important thing. Citizens are the bedrock of what we do because we depend, after Allah, we depend on the citizens of the Kingdom of Serbia, of what has been planned. Uh, the government is following up closely and have been asked over the uh, recent days about our own plans relating to the budget, taking into consideration the big transformation and reformations uh, given of COVID-19. The government is uh, working closely on the local, regional and local and international level and we have such a great trust and confidence in the health sector. Uh, of course, uh, they have such a great proficiency, competency, of course, and also this has been witnessed by the world, across the world, of course. They have, of course, efficiently addressed all the crisis uh, here in the Kingdom of Serbia. They have such a great efficiency and ability to overcome any crisis. The, the custodian of Tuhala Mosque, directed, of course, clearly when it comes to the announcement of the budget that we need to allocate what is required and needed by the health sector uh, for this COVID-19 pandemic. Also, I'd like to uh, draw your attention. Tomorrow, we will have the forum of the budget, of course, and the other day, of course, we will also have different ministers to speak more about what has been achieved this year, where we spend, of course, the budget and what has been achieved for the citizens and the economy. They will be further speaking about our own objectives and target in 2022. Of course, each minister will speak uh, for uh, the respective and relevant uh, sector. And also, I'm calling you here and inviting you all to attend the forum over the upcoming two years. Two, sorry, two days. Uh, thank you very so much. And now I'm opening the floor to more questions. We have one microphone, uh, and I don't want to delay it. So I w would like to pick two to three right and, and left. Uh, so that they go to the microphone, introduce themselves, and also ask the question. I'll start, I'll start from the right, please. Go ahead. After. Yes, please. Go ahead. Hello, Ali Asharif, Sky News Arabic. Uh, my question to Your Excellency, at the beginning, uh, I would like to congratulate you on the announcement of the budget and also the realization of such great figures and numbers uh, and achievements, of course, uh, what is the priority of the budget and what is the impact of the citizens directly? The second point is the private sector is one of the success partners in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and one of the targets of 2020, uh, 2030 vision. Sharik program, what is it that will achieve for the citizens and what is the impact that is expected over the upcoming years? Thank you so much. Thank you. The priority of the budget, I just spoke about this. As for providing services for the citizens, ensure, uh, make sure, rest assured that we provide always services for the citizens at a high quality. We we'll always keep improving the services. That is why 43% uh, percentage will go to like different things such as um, education, healthcare, and and municipal uh, services. As for supporting the private sector, the private sector in lawyers, of course, Saudis, and it is all mostly owned by Saudis, and it has such a great investment opportunity for Saudi. It is very important, of course, for us to support the private sector, to be motivated by the private sector. Sharika program is a very important program, of course. We are speaking about, we're speaking through it, of course, with the different companies, uh, those willing, of course, to engage in this program. What is it that we provide to be motivated, of course, to increase investment opportunities, and not just like at the medium term, as the private sector used to, to work through, no, it is, will be furthermore. We also uh, target not just like the economic uh, growth and development and increase the economic uh, development and the growth, but also we uh, aim to create more job opportunities, hopefully. Please go ahead. 
And then after you, please. Uh, hello, Musa Musa from Murtana. My question is to you, Your Excellency. How much is the how much is the due payments that have been paid, of course, to the private sector in 2021? Thank you. This is a very good question. Thank you so much. Uh, as for the private sector, it was like 20, 220 uh, billion uh, sold reals uh, as of, of course, the uh, government procurement, of course, uh, system. It is very important uh, as to, it's stimulated or provided we have to pay the private sector in 45 days supporting the private sector in the COVID-19, of course, the... And 97% of this amount of money were paid, uh, 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 f paid of course, uh, just uh, uh, some money, of course, some, um, uh, some payment uh, were, were, were paid later, but 97% were paid, of course, within less than 15 days. Please, I hope. Uh, f my, from Al Arabiya. Most of the private sector institutions, of course, suffer from the high increase and the, of course, the cost and fees of the government. You, sub, you talked about the private sector support, how it will contribute to uh, solve this kind of problem. We always support the private sector. In COVID-19 pandemic, of course, the government, of course, provide different initiatives uh, up to, up to 238, uh, of course, uh, whether like in terms of uh, supporting payment and also exemption, such as, for example, air flights uh, or flights and uh, agency, travel agencies, uh, and also tourism. The other, uh, other efforts, of course, have been provided, such as, for example, the uh, renewing uh, uh, residence permits, uh, work permits, and also like uh, we always support, support the private sector. Different procedures are being taken the Ministry of the Human Resources, of course, just recently to look in, reconsider, of course, in terms of cost and fees, even though, like, violations, uh, they uh, saw that uh, they will deal with these issues more interactively to give them, like, a warning or, a warning or previous warning or notice, like, to reduce some violations. Uh, as for the Ministry of Commerce, uh, they announced uh, very clearly uh, just weeks ago to study a different, of course, procedures and measures to ensure that we will not make it a burden on the private sector. Please go ahead. Good evening, Your Excellency. We have today the files of job opportunities, housing, healthcare, education, are uh, indicators, of course, for the efforts of the government uh, to support this. If we speak about 200, sorry, 2022, uh, will the government, uh, uh, of course, keep uh, supporting these files uh, because they are very important, such as housing, healthcare, and education? I don't want to uh, uh, answer, but if you attend the forum, uh, his, uh, their excellencies, Ministry of Housing, Ministry of uh, education, healthcare, and uh, or health, uh, they will speak about this, but rest assured that the government uh, in 2022 and beyond will also continue supporting these fines or these issues uh, strongly, efficiently, even more, uh, with like uh, the figures will be announced by the Ministry of Mumra, uh, uh, specific figures, uh, how many people or, uh, uh, have been accommodated or, or have benefited from the housing uh, b b because of the support of the housing in addition to the sector of health and uh, transportation information technology please go ahead and then like and then okay thank you so much your excellency muhammad al bishi al sharqa newspaper your excellency we have heard of course uh, a lot of development uh, growth in the in the investment of course for the 2030 vision of course the investment uh, made great leaps and and quantum leaps of course uh, and also the number of factories uh, from five five or seven thousand factories up to ten thousand factories uh, we noticed uh, and we felt that some kind of worry or uneasiness uh, in terms of like uh, the, the customs and the zaka and income of course started to see this kind of retroactive uh, retroactive uh, uh, effect uh, for the people working and this thank you so much and uh, this is a very important question and it is sensitive point we are studying this of course uh, of course uh, closely but to make it clear 
the authority of zakah, uh, customs and, and income, of course, applying the law, the policy comes from the government. And we want to ensure that to make it, of course, should be based on the law or the system based on the statutory procedures and governed by those, of course, the rights and duties of, of, of to be like uh, file a complaint or file an objection, whether uh, this authority or the other authority. It is the right of the citizens to file a, 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 complaint, a complaint, just to ensure also to make it clear as for the point for the zakah and income. Most of the tax and income, of course, gives the authority to go back five years to review the decisions. Why? Because uh, statements are provided by thousands of people, thousands of companies, and if the authority, for example, wants to review the statement, so it will uh, stop the institution. Most of the statements will be accepted as is, uh, because this is based on trust and confidence. In certain cases, the authority needs to review some statements uh, where th certain things will be fined or identified, some violations will be identified, whether intentionally or intentionally, whether like uh, deceptively or undeceptively, because such people who made like these statements by probably by like uh, deceptively. Uh, so it is, uh, it has the right, of course, to go back five years. As for the period of time for the authority of zakah and income and other international ones, if you look into different ones, if you look into the media, you will find so many cases where it goes back more than five years, uh, uh, what is known as tax evasion, uh, where the statements, of course, have not been uh, tax statements have been submitted. So those who have not submitted the results or uh, the tax statements uh, is to evade and uh, not a mistake. Uh, the mistake, of course, cannot get back to five years. But if it is approved uh, that it is tax evasion, the authority will go back to more than five uh, to five years. Please go ahead and then get back to you. Hello. Uh, the Sapa, Majid Al Fadani from Sapa. How will the budget, of course, to create more job opportunities and reduce unemployment? Thank you. This is a very important question. Uh, the, His Royal Highness Crown Prince spoke about the press conference today about this, of course, and uh, we have seen uh, different government efforts, of course, uh, in, in, in COVID 19 pandemic, of course, uh, also. Uh, reduced, of course, reduced the unemployment by the government efforts by for the uh, private sector employees uh, to reduce uh, reduce uh, uh, the time of getting out. Uh, we have seen a good uh, business uh, recovery uh, this year. This has been reduced based on, of course, the uh, unemployment. Uh, of course, unemployment reduced or was reduced. Uh, we spoke about the support of the economic uh, sector and the investment and the uh, national strategy of investment, the purpose of which, of course, is three strategies to support the economic growth and development. It means that we will have more factories, we'll have more institutions, more companies, more services, and the companies will provide more and more. These, these kind of uh, increases, of course, means simply that uh, more male and female uh, uh, citizens will be employed. So. Uh, 2020-30 target will, of course, uh, be or reach up to 7% of the unemployment. Please go ahead. It is almost there. I will take one more question. And I'll take your question on the other one. Hello, Your Excellency. I'd like to congratulate you on the announcement of this budget and these figures. I hope you always a successful budget. My question is to you is also related to the private sector. We have noticed over the uh, recent period of time, uh, much uh, development and growth for the private sector, for the private sector, but still so many great, of course, uh, great, great private sector institutions are still impacted. What are the solutions that can be added? What are the solutions that can be added over the uh, period, com period, coming period of time, of course, by the government to reduce uh, the burdens, particularly when it comes to the small and medium-sized enterprises? We have We have the financial sustainability. We have looked and considered into the cost of economy, including the uh, cost that you have talked about. And we have also reconsidered uh, 
because we don't want to always uh, target the non-oil revenues. We also would like to target the increase of development and growth because economy increases, profits increase, so tax and income increase higher and higher. So we don't target only, we target the growth and development uh, so the economy will be better, better and also the uh, government will be uh, successfully able to create more opportunity and uh, more job opportunities and employment uh, or relating to reducing the burdens on citizens. I hope and wish always to see more improvements. Uh, a lot of initiatives have been announced uh, by the government entities and authorities and we see more and more to mitigate and reduce, of course, the burdens on the private sector institution. Also, I believe that the private sector also is, 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 is invited and called to enhance its own uh, competency and efficiency. So, but again, it is appropriate, of course, to look into these agencies, uh, so, sorry, to, to look into these private sector institutions to enhance the competency efficiency. Equally important in the government, we will increase also the competency and efficiency of the government to reduce, of course, the, the expenditure also, or the, the, the cost. Of course, uh, the budget of uh, 2022 is a surplus of 90 billion as for the expenditure, 955, so the surplus is 90 billion. As for the, but, uh, the deficiency is 85 billion, much less than what has been announced and much has been much than what has been announced, uh, the deficiency in 2020. I would like to conclude one, one final question. I promised him one final question, please go ahead. Mohammed bin Saad al Ikhbariya, News uh, TV channel. Let me just ask, ask you this question, what is more controversial, which is very important for the citizens in light of the announcement of this surplus, big surplus of money and this great uh, uh, budget uh, within the economic crisis across the world, will, 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 uh, all the VAT, will the VAT be reduced? And also, will some commodities and goods be supported financially in 2022? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this question. We talked about this one, and I have just talked about this previously, and we talked about this last year, and I just said also that, that the general trend or orientation is to reconsider and relook also into the tax when things are better, uh, economy is better, and to remind you the deficiency that have been taken uh, that have taken place in 2020, uh, 255. Uh, billions uh, and later of course uh, 85 billions so when of course we have a surplus in one year that will cover will not cover uh, the deficiencies and the debts of course and uh, financial withdrawals to cover the uh, of course the deficiency in the budget to provide services but again i repeat again we will reconsider in in in, in the vat in the vat tax uh, uh, for the time being, the surplus are very important to use to support the reserve, the financial reserve. Of course, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is still lurking behind somewhere. We wish always to ensure that uh, the financial center of the government will be able always uh, to overcome any kind of crisis in the future. This is a policy that is very important to follow to avoid taking any procedures that are very difficult uh, when we don't have the ability, of course, uh, to absorb the, uh, uh, of course, the shocks or the crises, uh, as is the case that we have seen over the last year. Thank you very so much. Your attention is highly appreciated. And I'm quite sorry for those who have not, I have not taken their question. Your attention is highly appreciated. I wish you uh, uh, attend the forum tomorrow and the, other, and the other day to ask more questions. Thank you so much.